All right, it's time now for our Wednesday Community Spotlight here on Free Waves. And we've got Alan Adler. It's time to talk all things truck and tech. And Alan, today we are touching on a topic that I think is super, super important. And it's the discrepancies between the way that autonomous technology is treated state to state. And oftentimes when we talk autonomous regulation, we look at it from a federal level. But in reality, we're talking interstate commerce. So regulations will differ from location to location, right? Well, we don't know exactly. I can't exactly tell you where the federal rulemaking is right now. I, I'm, I just am not up on that. There isn't any, let's put it that way, in terms of, you know, uh, governing all the states as, as far as testing autonomous vehicles. But what I'm looking at for Friday is, you know, where are the, I call it a kind of a whack-a-mole thing. You've got things coming up in different states where they're, you know, like California did last year, where they're trying to ban autonomous trucks over 10,000 pounds. Um, without a without a safety driver, um, the Teamsters are a major um, backer of these of these bills, uh, as they were in California. They chased it down to Texas. They did not prevail there. Now we've got some activity in New York and Indiana, and a few other states. There's some states where it's also, you know, trying to join the 23 that already allow autonomous truck testing without a driver. Um, so it's just a good opportunity. We spoke with Jeff Farah from the uh, Autonomous Vehicle Industry Association uh, for this. We've also you know, reached out to the Teamsters, expecting to hear back from them, and a couple of the couple of the companies that are actually very close with their autonomous trucks and from a policy perspective to get their input. So it should be uh, hopefully a pretty uh, comprehensive look. Um, haven't started writing yet, but the reporting's going well. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I think it is. A, it, it's a good topic to revisit from time to time. I think it's super important, and I know you mentioned not knowing exactly where that federal rulemaking is. We mentioned this in headlines earlier this week, that federal rulemaking on the ADS systems is now being pushed back again for, I think it's the third or fourth time now. The FMCSA mentioned that in their policy, uh, I, I guess, layouts for 2024, looking at probably before the summer, before they make a decision on that. And as you mentioned, a lot of these companies, our big players, aren't necessarily at that point of commercialization just quite yet, but they're getting close, right? Kodiak making those runs on that I-45 corridor in Texas. You've got Aurora, which has now announced their partnerships and continuing to make those developments. When it comes to making those plans for commercialization, do we think it's a big priority right now for the autonomous companies to really go in line with expected state regulations, or are they just kind of putting out their technology with the idea that they can ramp it back if need be when the regulations are finalized? Well, the focus for uh, autonomous driverless trucking is the southwest United States. So Texas will be the sort of the launch point, if you will, for both Aurora and Kodiak Robotics. They say later this year, we'll see if that holds. Uh, Torque Robotics is is a few years behind that, but they're already testing from, say, uh, let's see, from California out to Oklahoma City with safety drivers, but a thousand mile route. So um, they're all pretty serious about where they are. We're seeing that the trucks that they want to use are largely in place. Kodiak has got its uh, sort of production production truck that it will upfit. Uh, Aurora has a version, um, maybe it'll get tweaked between now and when they actually start doing um, Aurora driver uh, systems online at, at assembly plants uh, around 2027, but they will launch 20 trucks, uh, they plan to anyway, um, this year. And they'll do it in Texas. You also have a pretty friendly environment in, in New Mexico. I-20 and I believe it's I-10 right now are pretty good, except for California, in terms of having regulations that would allow you know, commercial uh, autonomous trucking. So I don't think they're worried so much about what happens up in the northern states or Colorado or anything like that right now, because you know that's going to take some more work to be able to handle some of those uh, weather conditions. But I think that you know they have a pretty good start on what, what they need. As I say, there was a attempt to sort of frustrate some work that Texas had been doing. And I, I say frustrate because it's been a very progressive state in terms of having the uh, autonomous regulations that allow testing. So, you know, they're benefiting from that, obviously, by having a lot of these companies, you know, bring their trucks there, bring their people there. And, and you know, so there's an economic benefit. But, um, but I think from a legislative standpoint, you've got, as I said, 23 states that allow some level of, of autonomous driverless truck testing more adding uh, all the time. But again, I really hope to hear back from the Teamsters on this. We've, you know, they're wonderful in their press releases with really colorful quotes, but I'd still like to hear it from somebody directly in terms of where their objections are. We know they don't think that this is safe. 
I'm not sure that that holds up. And they, they also claim that it's taking away jobs from, from drivers. I also don't think that necessarily holds up either because you've got, you know, some level of a driver shortage out there. And uh, these are the long haul routes, uh, ultimately, that, you know, the people are not signing up to do. Humans aren't. And uh, so maybe the robots should do them. But um, anyway, so that's Friday. Today we've got on the show, we have kind of something interesting. Um, It's a Nicola story, but not really a Nicola story because it is Mary Chan, who is the chief operating officer of, of Nicola. Uh, Mary's background is is sort of uh, digital communications, computers, as well as uh, uh, telecommunications. She once ran OnStar at General Motors and was the person who sort of ushered in a couple pretty cool things like CarPlay at GM. They were among the first, if not the first, to offer that, uh, you know, teen driver alerts to the parents, stuff like that. So she's all about... Uh, you know, the, the inside of the vehicle, but she's also having to deal with some of the issues like uh, finding battery supply and things like that that Nicola needs. So nice conversation with her for three o'clock today. Love that. And I like seeing this inside look at Nicola. And as you mentioned, that kind of featurey almost of what they're looking to build their trucks and take away some of that focus from some of the negative things that they've had. I love that, as you mentioned, Mary has been that person who ushered in the car play and seeing all that technology. Is that something that her skill set is carrying over into this side of being COO at Nicola is really making sure that you know, the trucks aren't just working in their either hydrogen or their battery component, but they're also souped up with some of this latest tech? Yeah, I missed part of that, but I think the answer is yes from the first part of the question. Um, she does see a, a connection. Obviously, there's new things to learn. I mean, working, you know, they don't have, you know, sort of a high production uh uh, factory floor at this point, but she is working with the engineers and this, uh, the CEO, Steve Gursky says she talks to engineers very differently than he does because he doesn't have uh, a lot of that background. His operations experience probably came within, uh, you know, the last 15, 20 years. I mean, he did run Opal uh, for, for General Motors. He was the vice chairman, but he really didn't work a lot in the sort of the, the hands-on engineering space. Um, Mary can do that. She spent, I think, 25 years at Lucent and time at Dell Computer and, and uh, you know, and then, of course, at OnStar. So um, she does, I think, communicate well on that engineering level. Um, but she does have kind of a big operation because, you know, she's doing the day-to-day stuff um, for Nicholas. So there's obviously some grow-in areas. I mean, I asked, for example, about, you know, where are they with a sort of conventional truck, you know, because right now they use a cab over that they got from a Veco in Europe. And, uh, and she said, well, what do you mean by conventional? So some of the terminology, you know, the, obviously a conventional truck here is one that has, you know, a, a hood and a nose and things like that. Um, she wasn't exactly familiar with some of those things, which I thought was a little surprising. But at the same time, you know, lingo is lingo. And, you know, it may or may not. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give her a pass on that, by the way, because I don't think it was that important. She just said that right now they need to make sure that the trucks they have are, are you know, can keep running, can run on hydrogen. They do have a story now of the guy we wrote about a few weeks ago who did make a 400 mile run. Um, they're claiming that with one fill, you can do a thousand miles, you know, go 500, turn around and do 500 more. If they get to that point, then they've got something that really does work for kind of regional haul plus. Um, maybe not true long haul, but, you know, because you don't have the hydrogen availability. You also have some serious cost issues around hydrogen right now. Uh, it has to come back down. I mean, I saw the other day that in California, it was up to $36 a kilogram. And when it was running in the teens, that was high compared to, you know, what diesel would be and things like that. So there are some pressures. She's going to have to work through that stuff. Obviously, all of Nikola will. And anybody who's making hydrogen vehicles will have to work through that. So, uh, but you're right. I think this was much more of a feature piece on somebody kind of, I call it, you know, from the outside to the inside uh, of the company. Awesome. Well, of course, we can catch that this afternoon at 3 o'clock, and your Truck Tech newsletter comes out to us on Fridays. Alan, thank you for joining us this morning, and we will see you later on today. Okay, thanks. All right, we'll go ahead and take one last break. We'll be back to finish up with a check of the weather right after this. 